The Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time is rated E for Everyone by the ESRB. Hello everyone and welcome back to another episode of The Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time Master Quest. In the last episode we explored Kakariko Village, we went grave ropping, and we got a third song through sun the sun's song which allows us to turn night to day and vice versa. In this episode, we're finally going to start going up Death Mountain Trail and try to get as much done from this point up until the start of the dungeon. And then in the next batch of videos, which we'll be starting to record maybe next week, um, as of this point of recording this video, I we will be entering... Dodongo's Cavern. So, we've got a bunch of new enemies here. These are tech types, very, um, well, well versed. A common enemy found in the Zelda franchise. Now, I hope it plays here. If not, I will be a bit sad. I'm just listening. Right there. You guys heard that bling bling? That is the sun song. It took me years to even notice where the sun song came from, and that's where it is at the beginning of every day. I wish I could roll down the mountain like a rock with a bomb flower, and boom! If I could do that with a bomb flower, I could become a real man. What an odd statement. And you. They say that a beautiful fairy lives on top of Goron Mountain. Don't you want to see her? These are the Gorons, or in the case of another YouTuber, potato people, because they look like potatoes. I don't see them looking like potatoes, but they definitely do look derpy. Now, we're gonna quickly say hello to this guy. I'm standing here to shade the bomb flower from the sun. Do you have a question for me? No. Those plants growing over there are bomb flat. Oh. Uh, basically, he's a tutorial man. He tells you about the cavern or the big boulder at the bottom of the ravine and the flowers at the top. And I'm gonna cover those myself with less speech bubbles. Anyways, here is Goron City. Now, the first thing we're gonna do is we are going to slowly fall down. <laughs> there we go. Okay, we are going to go to this room. You're standing on a soft carpet for guests. It feels so plush under your feet. If you play Zelda's lullaby here, this shows that you have the credentials of the royal family. And you are Prince Link here to visit. I could just, I real now I want a Zelda game where Link is a prince. He can still be like a swordsman and all that and go on an adventure, but instead of just being some random kid out in the middle of nowhere, to have him be a prince. What the heck? Who are you? When I heard the song of the royal family, I expected their messenger had arrived, but you're just a kid. Little kid. Has Darunia, the big boss of the Gorons, really lost so much status to be treated like this by his sworn brother, the king? Now I'm really angry. Get out of my face now. Are you asking why I'm in such a bad mood right now? Ancient creatures have infested... <clears throat> Sorry. Ancient creatures have infested the Dodongo's Cavern. We've had a poor harvest of our special crop, the bomb flowers. Starvation and hunger because of the rock shortage. But 
This is a Goron problem. We don't need any help from strangers. Okay. Well, rude. All I did was say hi. Anyways, we're going to light a... We're gonna light a Deku stick from the inside of Big... Big Brother Dur Oh, sorry. Big Boss Darunia's room. And we're going to light these torches down here. And Link's gonna do a little ballerina twirl. Ballerina! And now we're also gonna light a fresh Deku stick so we don't waste. And come up these stairs to an area just higher up. Right here. And here. Now I am slightly curious. No, this doesn't look like it made Goron City brighter. Uh, the reason why I mentioned that is this Goron right here will say, That oh, was Big Brother. I see. By the way, do you know the music coming from deep inside this of this tunnel? We all like this music. Oh, I missed some text. Basically, he says he wants to light up Goron City to make it brighter by getting the fire from Big Goron's room. But, I never noticed that he said everybody likes the song from here, from the forest. Now, the main reason why I waited on uh, doing another batch of videos and not starting Dodongo's Cavern is because of this shortcut. Now that we have this shortcut, I'm able to go to Death Mountain and back so quickly. <laughs> Um, you. Good to see you again, Hoot Hoot. Listen to this, Hoot Hoot. After going through the Lost Woods, Hoot Hoot, you will come upon the Sacred Forest Meadow, Hoot Hoot. That is a sacred place where few people have ever walked, Hoot Hoot. Shh! What's that, Hoot Hoot? I can hear a mysterious tune. You should listen for that tune, too, Hoot Hoot. Hoo hoo hoo! Do you want to hear what I said again, Hoot Hoot? No. If you are courageous, you will make it through the forest just fine, Hoot Hoot. Just follow your ears and listen to the sounds coming from the forest, Hoot Hoot. Now this is an interesting puzzle, and one that is only effective at this point. But if you approach a path that is correct, you will hear loud music. If you stand in the middle of a room, you can faintly hear it, and if you are towards an area that goes nowhere, there is no music except for the rat tat tat of the Lost Woods. This is cool, and I love this mechanic, because it tells you how to navigate this forest without really giving you a map of how to navigate. Now, I know about this path, so... There's actually nothing in here for me at the moment. There is that path there, which is more important later on, but not so much right now. We're going to keep going through this path and reach the Sacred Forest Meadow, which is right here. And I could have come this far because when, at the beginning of the game, because in this patch of grass, 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 there is another five rupees. So if you're still looking for rupees from an early uh, part of the game, you can come to the Sacred Forest Meadow because there's a lot of grass patches you can get to and go to in order to increase your... Um, your the amount of money you're carrying currently carrying not all the patches have money and if I remember correctly the left here is shallow water so this is a bit of an optical illusion because there are bodies of water that are like this but are deeper so you'd have to swim, which doesn't help when you're trying to defend yourself against the monsters. So we're gonna keep going, we're gonna start going up. We've 
got this guy here. And we are finally at the end of the Sacred Forest Meadow. I'm actually gonna... There's gonna be a bit of a sound change through my mic, because... You can kind, you could probably hear game music going through my microphone. Hi, Saria. I've been waiting for you. Um, you? This is a sacred forest meadow. It's my secret place. I feel this place will be very important for both of us someday. That's what I feel. If you play the ocarina here, you can talk with the spirits of the forest. Would you like to play the ocarina with me? Sure. We won't say no to a cutie like her. Okay. Try to follow along with the melody I will play. Are you ready? song, so that's already four songs for the ocarina out of the twelve. Now, I love Saria's song, but I wish that there was more use to it. First of all, there's a fun little, like, paradox we have here. If we talk to Saria again... When you want to hear my voice, play Saria's song. You can talk with me anytime. And if we play her song... Excuse me. You want to talk to Saria, right? Yes. Um, you. This is Saria. Can you hear me? I don't mind talking to you using the ocarina's magic, but I really like to talk to you face to face. Do you want to talk to Saria again? No. What's funny is that I am standing face to face with her, but she did not. It, it's funny in some cases. Anyway, so that was the Sacred Forest Meadow, and now we have a song that the Gorons like. Now, I do wish that there was more uses to Saria's song. If you're stuck with a problem, you can use it uh, to talk to Saria for advice, or if you're lost on what to do next, you can tell Navi no, you don't want to speak with Saria first, and you can speak with Navi in order to get a hint. Not that that's really a big problem, because Navi speaks up every, like, five minutes. Hoot hoot. Did you learn an ocarina song from Zarya? That melody seems to have some mysterious powers, hoot hoot. There may be some other mysterious songs like this that you can learn in Hyrule, hoot hoot. If you hold the ocarina with C, where a melody is necessary, a musical staff will appear. I recommend that you play a song you know, Hoot Hoot. I also suggest that you play even when a score is not displayed, just like this. Hoot 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 Do you want to hear what I said again? No. Melodies you have learned will be recorded on the quest status screen. You should memorize those melodies. Flap, 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 flap. Now... There are areas of this game where he is referring to, but we're not going to necessarily deal with them right now. For now, we're going to make our way back. Now that we have Saria's song, we want to go back, uh, not to the Goron City yet, but back to we're at the front of the forest. So we want to go visit Skull Kit here. And from here, jump on the pedestal, 
and he wants us to play a song. And he actually says what song he wants. He wants to play Saria song, which could also be called the Lost Wood song. And if you do that, you know Saria song, we should be friends. Here, take this. He will give you a piece of heart. So now we have a new heart container being formed. Now, I'm trying to think of where to go next. There's nothing else in the forest at the moment we could do. So we're gonna head our, make our way back to Goron City now. And go check out Darunia and play for him the favorite song of the Goron. We're gonna jump on down, roll past the potato men. Gosh, now I'm thinking of them as potato men. Roll past the Gorons, reapproach Darunia, and play the melody. Just like that, my depression is all gone. Something just came over me. I suddenly wanted to dance like crazy. I am Darunia. I'm the big boss of the Gorons. Was there something you wanted to ask me about? What? You want the spiritual stone of fire too? Too. The spiritual stone of fire, also known as the Gorons Ruby, is our race's hidden treasure. But hold on. I'm not going to give it to you that easily, if you want it so badly. Why don't you go destroy the monsters inside of the Dodongo's cabin and prove you're a real man? That way, everybody will be happy again. If you do it, I will give you anything you want, even the spiritual stone. I have something for you. I'm not really giving you this in return for anything, but take it anyway. If you wear this, even a little fella like you can pick a bomb flower using A. And with that, we got the Goron's bracelet. Now you can pull up bomb flowers, stand next to one and use A to pull it up. Now there's a fun fact that only has been realized within recent playthroughs of Zelda, because there have been people who have skipped grabbing the Goron's bracelet and gone into later dungeons. Eventually, you'll come across these really large stone blocks that you have to push and pull. They are much bigger than Link, but because you've been able to move blocks easily, you would not think that you would need any special tool for that. Without the Goron's bracelet, you are unable to move these really big stone blocks, and therefore you can't solve puzzles that are found in the later... Uh, I'm trying to think of where the bomb flowers are. I know I could pick some. Ah, there it is. Anyway, sorry about that. Um, without the Goron's bracelet, you can't complete the later dungeons, which means that if you really were going, I think I'm just gonna come back for that. It is possible to get this uh, heart piece uh, now. But if you have your own bomb bag, then you don't have to worry about picking a flower and running as fast as you can in order to... Maybe I could try that one. Uh, continuing that sentence, picking a flower in or and running in order to throw it into the vase. So we're not going to do that. We're actually just going to go off and... Sorry, I'm just thinking about where I am for time. Technically, this is 
Mm, if I'm gonna do what I wanna do, I could end it as a shorter episode. So what we're gonna do is throw this bomb flower down and miss. Throw this bomb flower down and almost miss again. And blow up the entrance to the Dongo's cavern. Now what we're gonna do is we're going to grab and throw the bomb flower that way and backflip off onto that upper cliff in order to get this high piece. Now we have two. We would have had three, but I'm not gonna uh, stress myself over trying to get the third one. And now we're ready to go into the Dodongo's cavern. And you know what? I think I will go a to my usual time. We're gonna go in here, and we're gonna get an epic shot. Of this. Welcome to Dodongo's Cavern. Anyways, guys, with this, I'm now going to call it an episode. If you like this episode, leave a comment in the comment section below. Mash that like button and subscribe if you have not for more Master Quest content. In the next episode, we're going to go through Dodongo's Cavern. And I have no idea what I'm going to be doing again, because now we're back inside of a dungeon which has been totally redesigned. Anyways, guys, I'll see you in the next episode. Bye.